Hello everyone, welcome to Eurostep and welcome to the Championship Day, the day that we've all been looking for throughout all this season. I'm very happy to be starting this day with you, Dane, after every Eurostep, after every game, after every practice that we're in. How, I mean, how pumped are we? It's Championship Saturday here from Belgrade and our guests just keep on getting better and better and better. Exactly. Our today's guest is Matias Moris, uh, former basketball player, three EuroLeague time champion thank you so much for being with us today thank you for having me thank you uh, we're gonna be talking about what we can expect about you know today's games our predictions and uh, obviously key players that will make the difference in this big game but also with uh, Matias about his experience in EuroLeague and winning so many titles. But first, I want everyone on YouTube watching to send us comments, to send any questions if you have also for Matias where we can ask them, we can ask him those questions. Oh, we also have someone saying hello and can't wait for the big final bon, weekend. Bon, you're there. like one of our most favorite commenters, man. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in on this big day. Thank you so much. Um, and again, I want to remind you this 20% uh, yearly discount that we have for you today with the code F420, you can enjoy a 20% off on the last two remaining games on Euroleague TV. And remember that you can also purchase individual games on Euroleague TV to watch your favorite team. So I invite you all to do it if your favorite play, play uh, game team is playing today or if you just love basketball it's the best way to do it but before we jump into what we have today before we jump in to talk about the games players i want to talk to our guests and uh, ask you how does it feel to be a three-time yearly champ well uh, of course it's it's great um but uh, you start to appreciate those uh, victories once you retire or you appreciate them more as time uh, more time passes uh, every one of them is special uh, everyone came at a different time uh, in my uh, career um, every everyone holds a, a, a special moment or a memory and uh, being there uh, on the court or seeing it now it just kind of brings back all the memories, all the emotions. So, yeah, it's, it's something special. You're part of an elite club, Matias. I mean, three times. I mean, not, there's not a lot of people who have won it, the EuroLeague three times. But which one was the most special? What moment to you stands out in your mind when you think about your career that you, that was the moment of my career? Yeah, definitely. Winning is hard. Um, everything has to go right. You have to be healthy, have a great group of, group of guys around you. You have to earn that sportsman lush. Uh, everything uh, has to fall into place. Uh, if I would have to pick one, it would be very difficult. But I will give a slight advantage to the first one with uh, um, with the Rus with the Russians with uh, uh, with the story in Prague when okay. we beat the monster team of Maccabi there, mm. who was the the, the favorite. Uh, I think that we were all kind of nervous and scared all the way till the end but i gotta tell you that lifting that trophy in a in a pack gym of maccabi fans in prague at the end just it's kind of builds you up as a, as a as a person as a player gives you more confidence uh, in what you do and, and and you just uh appreciate it enormously that's really refreshing to hear because most guys say no it was my first one my first title but no you you're here you're no, saying no that the, the situation that you guys were in in that second one was really the kind of i the, agree because there was there was a lot of pressure of you know finally getting another 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 title after so many years of uh, Ceska. uh but the first one with with kinder was i was a kid i didn't yeah. really know i knew but i didn't really know what that right. meant and my role in that team was smaller uh, I was still building a name for myself. It was the beginning of the career, but that that, that my my second title in Prague, like I said, that was that was a confirmation that I'm doing things right, that we're on the right path, and that will always have a special special. I'm sure a lot of guys would be happy to hear that we're going to play today because a lot of them are going for their second title or yeah, more. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Actually, the other day we saw Fabian Coser, one of Real Madrid players super emotional he was crying right after the game and you may think he's been to a lot of final four finals so why does he get like this you know and i asked him and he was like you know it's been such a hard season for us that just makes it more yeah. special to be here and it makes it you know a lot of mixed feelings a lot of injuries this season a lot of hard times no one believed that we could make it and we made it yeah. especially against barcelona that they hadn't win <laughs> for like seven zero so those kind of moments are the ones that mark you and um i want to ask you how do you prepare 
for a Final Four? What's the, what's the mindset that you need to have? Well, first of all, you need experience. So for, when you're first time here, all the <clears throat> fuss, the media, the <laughs> fans, the, the hotels, the travel. They're so sick of us. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> not, not really sick, but it's, uh, it's a distraction. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean it in a bad way. But for a player to stay focused on what he has to do, these all things are a distraction. You know, you got to get tickets for your family, for your friends. Everybody's right. texting you, <laughs> trying to get in touch with you. Hey, hey, hey. But you really have to just block all that out. Yeah. And you have to explain to your family and best friends that these four days or five days, I don't exist. Just yeah. come to the game, see me play. We can talk a little bit, but I got I got a mission. I'm on. I'm here to do business this is what i work for the whole the whole season the whole career um every moment here is special you never know when you're going to come back again so i i agree that for uh, fs players this is this is tremendous they they could be written in history if they manage to, to beat Real tonight um so so there's there's extra pressure in defending the title that's not easy at all it's not it stays in your in your mind in the back of your mind that you're defending it you're not yeah. chasing another there's always the defending champion. There's always that, those words that are in, 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 in the air to whomever you talk to. Right. So preparing for the Final Four and for each game is, is, is extremely important. Stay focused. Don't lose your, 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 your track, your, your, yeah. your, your composure, because the, in the end, many, many games are decided by little, little details. We saw yesterday what an incredible shot Mitzic made. We can go back in history and look at all the games that in the end it's yeah. one free throw it's one yeah. rebound one box out something that makes you the champion or not so you really have to keep your focus <laughs> and you can't do it when you're here the first time when you go hopefully second and third time to the final four then those things became clear and, and, it's, and it's easier as much as it can be <laughs> and speaking about mitis we have a comment from Van saying no luca magic here but mitch magic is right here today. We also have Yusuf, Ta Yusuf Khan saying hi. Mantas can wait. And uh, let's move on now to talk about the first game that we are going to have today because we don't only have the final. We have the game to decide the third and fourth place, which will be played between uh, Olympiacos Pirios and Barcelona. Obviously, they will be kind of disappointed, kind of sad because they didn't make it to the finals. And at the end, that's every team's goal, every team's objective when they come to the Final Four. How do you pick yourself up after such a loss and, and have to play again for a third place? Well, I think that this third place game is just something that you have to do. You don't really emphasize it too much. Um, Surely there's a disappointment from that semi-final loss, but I would say that you have to take that as a learning curve. You have to um, take the punches as, as, as they come uh, and uh, be better next year or next time. Um, and I'm, I've been always saying, or that was one of my models of how they, they taught me, that you always learn more from a loss than from a win. Because when you lose, you go through the move in your head many times right after the game or even months later even years later and you say this i could have done better this yeah. i should have been there this is this this is this this is this and that's how you learn that's yeah. how next time you're sharper you're better you're stronger you're more prepared more focused and you correct those things and maybe you're a step higher for olympiacos i mean that wound is still open it's still fresh but is there any sort of sense of pride it's been a long time since they got to the final four and after all this time they came out and they were just a second away is there any sort of Okay, we're here, we got here, and we're building something. Uh, definitely. I think there's a lot of pride for all the teams that played in the playoffs yeah. to get here. All the teams that made it to game five. Uh, uh, all the teams that pushed the favorite to do something extra yeah. uh, to go to the final four. I think there's pride in that. And that you learn, that you had this sensation that you're there. That it doesn't, you're not far away. It doesn't yeah. take much more. Uh, and I'm sure that the, the wonderful fans that they have that we sure. saw um, yesterday was just a, a demonstration how much the people love the team and how much support they have. And, and I think that everybody in red and blue here was proud of the team because they gave their best. And in the end, it was ma magic message that you know pulled yeah. something yes. out of his uh, magic box yeah. and decided the game. <laughs> that, that's why you play and you never know until the last second.
That's basketball. That's something that yeah. it could have been then or it could have been Olympiacos. So it was for any of them because they both played amazing. Uh, Barcelona was a team that was built to win last season. They came to the final. They didn't make it. And this year, everyone has been talking about them as the big favorites for this uh, EuroLeague championship. Unfortunately, they lost against Real Madrid. And once again, they didn't take this step farther than they were hoping. So do you think that next year they will bounce back and, and come back sure. and, and do um, it again? I think that the most important thing in, sport is, in sports is you don't quit. You always learn. You always analyze and try to improve. There's always room for improvement. And I think this was a big learning uh, lesson for Barcelona. Of, they, of course, they will be more stronger, hungrier. I'm sure they will change some things um, and, and, and come ready next year. Uh, if I remember correctly, even uh, the whole story of uh, Fenerbahce and Jelko, it took a lot of time yeah. for them yeah. to actually win one, yeah. to actually be in the final four and be that monster beast to, to dominate, to win. So winning is really, really precious, special, doesn't come often. And you got to work for it. It, it. Sometimes it's just, I don't know, the, the god of sports says, not yet, not today. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have another round. <laughs> let's, let's make them work yeah, for it. Make them look. Unfortunately, that's why you play. And yeah. then when you do it, it's even sweeter, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, Favorites don't always win. That's why you play. That's why you come to these uh, games and events. So here in a couple of hours, we do have the third place game, Olympiacos in Barcelona. Sofia, first I want your prediction, and then we'll switch it over to the legend. I'm going to go... With Olympiacos, I think that for them, making it here is, is a gift. All the fans are here and they want to perform right and they're going to have that motivation. And I'm going to say hi to Maestro de Oro saying Olympiacos, great fans saying Olympiacos, Olympiacos. So I'm going to be with them. And I think that Olympiacos wins the third place. What do you think? Well, I think it's difficult to call. Um... Surely, I think it will mean a little bit more to Olympiacos because at one point during the season, they, they had trouble and it didn't look like they could go this far. Uh, and of course, they'll have the, the, the support of the full, uh, full crowd. Um, so yeah, a little advantage Olympiacos. I think it's whoever comes in more disappointed is the, the, the underdog. And I think there's obviously both teams are disappointed, but Barcelona with all the expectations, being the favorite all season, they, they, they come in just depleted after that game. Obviously, Olympiacos losing on the last second, but having their fans here, being back in the Final Four, I do think that this game means more to them than Barcelona, and I think Olympiacos pulls it out here today. After that game, we only have one left, one left for this EuroLeague season, which is the one that we'll see the, the season 2021-22 EuroLeague Champions ground. This much emotion this much significance here at the Stark Arena. Oh. Turn and jam! Larkin, got it! Are you kidding me? Dustin rises! Sergio Yui. Thursday, we witnessed how two teams became the new EuroLeague finalists to fight for the championship, for the trophy, Anadolu FS Istanbul and Real Madrid. Anadolu FS is looking for a back-to-back, -back. is here to fight, to repeat, to take the title back again. Are we witnessing, are we seeing a new European powerhouse here with, uh, with FS? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the, the year, the COVID year, when uh, the season didn't end, there was no fan for. I think they were yeah. ready to, to, let's say, to, to win or to, to be a serious contender in that final four. So we'll never know. Uh, obviously, they have shown that in the last two years, they're one of the powerhouses. Um, they have great guards, uh, which we saw yesterday, uh, that dominated the game, that kind of pulled things together. Um, under the basket, they have 
very solid big men that work for the team. So yeah, definitely a powerhouse. And uh, the Turkish basketball has been you know yeah. growing up in the last decade, and yeah. this is the this is one of the results. No, it's been about four years now that FS has either been the best or around the best uh, top yeah. of the table. Exactly. And 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 really, you, if if the situations were different, you're talking about a dynasty right now. I mean, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Dynasty is a good expression. Um, I think they were successful in keeping Shane there uh, when they extended his contract and even when Vasilya didn't leave uh, for the NBA and he stayed here I think this is definitely a dynasty that could still stick together for many yeah. years and be a problem or a team to beat in the next three four five years yeah, well it, it's been that kind of story that we've been talking about all week Sophia where you know you have this this new team on the block you know the new kids on the block who are who are big and brash you know with Ataman talking the, all this stuff very confident but then you're going up against the kings of Europe you're going up against Real Madrid and it's that sort of dichotomy and two giants collide right now Real Madrid I mean it, it, coming in how are they feeling right now the confidence has to be there despite the end of their season, despite I, everything. I completely agree. I think them advancing to the final was a big energy and mental boost. I think they all feel like they can fly. Yeah. Uh, they have a good experience here. They won their last, I think, here in Belgrade 2018. Yeah. So a lot of players are still on the team. Uh, they have an experienced team which has a lot of talent. And this is going to be a very, very close game. Very fun to watch, I think. <laughs> And probably little things at the end will decide. Yeah. That's what I and probably everybody as a fan uh, expects or desires to, to, to see a big, big game uh, that will go down to the wire. Yeah, Sofia, last time Madrid was in here, as Matias said, Real Madrid won here in Belgrade. That was their last time. Can they do it again? They can do it. They're in the final. So definitely there's a possibility. <laughs> there's 50 50 for, for every team. I mean, from what we saw in the semifinals, anything can happen today on the games. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you come out to the court, to the to, to the game. But then we saw that Real Madrid came out strong, then not so strong, and they were losing. But then they came back in the third in the third quarter. So I don't know. I don't know. It depends on on how the game develops. It depends on how Shane Larkin has a day and midgets because they're key players for for FS and they can harm a lot Real Madrid if Real Madrid cannot stop them. But I'm gonna go with Los Blancos. <laughs> there, there's something about there's something about this Real Madrid team and not just the basketball team but the football team too. The season they're had something's magical in the water right now. Real Madrid. If you talk about a month ago, a month and a half ago. They would have never thought they'd be in this situation, right? I mean, is it is there something about this club that when they're in this situation, the quality just kind of rises to the surface? Yeah, I'm sure that they have that ability that you can't pinpoint. Right. And uh, the closer that they get to the big games, to to, to the elimination elimination games, you know, be it soccer or, or basketball, yeah. they become better. They they see it as a challenge, and that challenge just kind of drives them. And that's what we saw. Two days ago, that's when we saw with the, with the yeah. soccer team. So they are a sleeping lion or a sleeping giant that you, you never can count out. They just, <laughs> you know, keep grinding, grinding, grinding here, there. In the final, with the, I would say a very, very good chance of winning, because uh, I think their their bench is a little deeper. They rotate more players, so that can be also an advantage for Real. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, it's it's 14 minutes and yeah. the best players will play yeah. and you know, <laughs> we'll enjoy it. Well, everyone watching is uh, definitely going for FS and Olympiacos. So for example, Ban is saying, I'm going to go with Olympiacos for third and FS for first. We also have Semit Oser saying Olympiacos and FS. Tiki Jojut, FS, Muas Yosin, FS. A lot of people watching FS. today. I mean, it's 9 30. What are you guys doing up I it's know. Saturday, guys? Thanks for watching, but my everyone, goodness. Everyone's excited <laughs> for this final. No one can sleep. We're, right. all, we're nervous about what's going to happen. You were talking about Real Madrid and how they have this special touch, to touch this special thing that makes them different from other teams. And they also have valuable players that you know even though that they have grown up with a team like Sergio Yul he's the only fifth time player that has got 3,500 points and Pablo Lasso just praises him wherever he goes how key do you think he is for the team well I think Sergio has been through a lot with um, through, through a lot in his career with the national team yeah. and the EuroLeague and everything and I'm sure he's there 
mentor on the court or yeah. let's say their, 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 their teacher, their, their motor, the, 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 the confidence booster guy and surely Tavares and, and, and Taylor and everybody that's been, that's been there with him are better because of him. Yeah. He's one of those players that has reached the level of, uh, of superstar uh, master principal or whatever, that when he plays, where he practices, other people are better because of him. And yeah. I think that's the ult ultimate level. Uh, we have Mitic on the other hand and Shane Larkin that make everybody else better because you got to send two, three guys sometimes to try to stop them. And Sergio Lur is somebody that has went through um, even some injuries and has shown that he, his persistency, his professionalism is, is something that, uh, that drives the team, basically. Yeah. And everybody else is better because of it. Let's see what Pablo Lazo says about him. He picked up as a point guard, 3,500 points in his career in year league. What a remarkable performance by him. Well, Julius um, is the soul of this team. He has yeah. been forever. I think he's going to be forever. Everybody's going to remind him. He knew it was going to be hard for him because he, after what happened to Nigel, he was going to play probably more minutes. But uh, he moved the ball well. He found open spots. He was able to play solid defense. So I think he was great for us, but I think him without the rest of the team wouldn't do anything. I think it was a great <laughs> Always correct, Pablo Lasso, right? You talked about Vasily Misic, you talked about Shane Larkin, but I want to know, first of all, are they going to have to make as many threes? And making that many threes in the semifinal game, do you think, uh-oh, it's a game of averages. We're going to start, this, we, we might go cold in the next game because we made so many. Um, and who's going to step up other than those two? Well, of course it's possible that you kind of have a cold, cold game, or maybe the, the hand kind of shakes a little right. bit. Um, but I'll think they'll keep trying. You know, yeah. This is how they played those one-on-one -on -one situations with the two guards uh, are going to be key for them. How successful are they there? Uh, we saw a great shooting performance from Bryant, who uh, who made, I think, five threes. Yeah. Uh, he was a big booster in the semifinal game. Uh, I'm sure that somebody uh, will, will, will show up. Maybe Anderson, maybe mm. uh, may, maybe Dunstan will dominate in, yeah. in, in the paint. You never know. But, of course, Tavares will be, uh, will be a, a giant or a mo right. monster force to, to control. Um, so these games, a lot of times, are decided by the silent hero. Here yeah. we all talk about the stars, but you never know. Maybe maybe Yasubele will have another super game for yeah. Real. Uh, maybe maybe somebody else uh, from the bench that you're not really expecting will will get off to a good start and 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 be the the, the little difference in the end, the boost that, that they need. So uh, you always look for somebody like that. So I think that the coaches always try to give a couple minutes to somebody to see how they feel. Uh, that doesn't play that much or that is not so uh, key factor during the season because you never know sometimes there's a there's a hidden diamond somewhere and speaking of coaches we have Yusef Khan asking in YouTube that if you were a coach which team which team would you like to be part of oh good question oh you mean the, fi the two finalists yeah uh or I general? don't know in general say both in general and the two finalists I'm sure it would be fun to to coach one or the other team, to see how the players think, what are their uh, daily routines or uh, how they react to, to different situations. Um, I don't think that composure-wise, the teams are that different. They have, they both have a couple of tall, tall, big guys. Mm -hmm. They have excellent guards on one and the other end. They have shooters, Real and, and, and FS. So as, as an idea, not that much different. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it would definitely be fun to try to coach Mitic or or uh, uh, Sergio Lul. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's a challenge I, either way. The lights just came on here. Yeah. Things are getting serious yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at here Star we Arena. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and in general, which team? Something, some team that you have in your heart that's special for you? In general, probably that Maccabi team. <laughs> to see how uh, Anthony Parker, Nikola Vucic uh, and uh, um, the rest of them manage to, to, to be as good as they are, you know, how, or, or maybe the, the, the Yugo Plastic of those years when oh, they were yeah. three in a row to, to have Kukoc and Raja and, 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 and <laughs> yeah. see those, those periods. And uh, just to end, because we don't have much time left, I want to ask you, it's a big day for players. It's, uh, it's a final, a European final. How do they prepare? Like, what do you think they're feeling right now? 
I think everybody is a little excited. There should be some, um, some, some, some tremors in the sense of, uh, uh, oh my God, we, we might actually win this. Hmm. And you probably, in the preparation before, have thought about the situation. But when it actually comes, um, you feel it more. Yeah. And everything bothers you as much as it can until the moment that the ball is tipped off. Yeah. At that point, you just kind of close in your own little world and the things that you have to do. Uh, but yeah, surely some, uh, uh, some, some, some nervousness and some uh, extra, extra sweat before the game. <laughs> but then once you get on the court and you start running, it just kind of goes away. You kind of push to the side and, and you do what you usually do. There isn't really anybody who knows about the finals, the day of the finals, day leading up to the finals, than you. You played in nine of these. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a whole lot. So I mean, this is this is like this is normal for you. But what what did you do? Did you do anything different? What was your kind of lead up to to the final? No, that's that's what basically I'm trying to say. The first time you don't know what to do. You try to right. have your normal preparation, like for every regular season game. But then the, the next, all the next final force, you know that you mustn't do anything different than yeah. the games before. You you gotta wear the same socks if you have game socks. You gotta wear the same underwear. You gotta wear, have the same. Do you eat band. the same meal? Yeah, of course. You do. You, you what do you? What did you used to eat? I mean, there's there was always a buffet. There was there was salmon, there was chicken, there was okay. some beef, yeah. there was some rice, and you gotta go with that. You can't you can't risk nothing. And there's also the fact of a venue always being uh, right. different and those little things like do the do the rims and the backboard fit me right. uh, do i feel comfortable here is the floor hard or is it soft uh, how's the bench uh, what will be the lighting and and so on and so on so all those little things are uh, like i said before a distraction but the most important mm. things that for me was that the daily routine of preparing of seeing the video of going to shoot around in the morning is always in the same way right. don't change nothing whatever worked before you're not going to change now for the final that, because that's what brought you here. Yeah. So you just do your thing. My, my old man used to eat tortellini before yeah, every game. See, every game. Everybody Carbo load, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You used to be full of energy for, the, for those games. And now a final question for from Gareth Ecker. Which player do you think could be an X factor for the final from both question. sides? Yeah, like I said before, somebody that's not in the spotlight, front line yeah. or in the spotlight. Like uh, there. I yeah, love sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure that if we look back, he was he was a monster, um, in a sense of importance in those in this semifinal game and all the games before, or maybe even the years before. He's kind of a silent hero, you know. You, everybody knows he can shoot. He's he's a, he's a good defender, but you don't really count on him as being the difference. But yeah. definitely somebody that that can be the, the, the game changer. And Atas. FS, I think it's going to be, I don't know, somebody that we're not really seeing right now. Really? Um, I mean, uh, even, let's say, Anderson, that that's been kind of quiet in that semifinal game, could could have a good game, or, uh, or, or or he could just, you know, throw somebody in from the match. I'm sure they miss Kronoslav Simon uh, yeah. and, and players like that, that, that are those role players that are of big, uh, of big importance. Um, so, so, tough to call. Well, and just a final question. Do you feel nostalgic? Would you like to go back? Like, do you see them and you're like, oh, I wish I, w I was there? Or is it more like... No, sure, yeah. Like I said before, <laughs> this brings back memories. And, of course, there's a part of me that thinks that I could still be on the court or wants to be on the court. But on the other hand, it's it's nicer up in the stands. You just watch. You just no watch it from the barrier. Box out and fight under the basket <laughs> and, 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 and all the tiredness that comes from that. Uh, so, yeah. It's okay. Mat <laughs> Matias, look at... I don't know if it's the real Tom Cruise, but Tom Cruise on YouTube just, uh, it, he said he's going with your league. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Tom Cruise. We're not sure if it's the real actor or not, but we can't let you get out of here without a prediction. I mean, you know how it goes around here. We give me the winner and the MVP. Well, I would say Real easy by three points. By three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, easy by three. Easy. Not easy so, not by not three. so yeah. easy. <laughs> uh, and uh, the MVP is going to be, uh, let's say, Sergio. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sofia? I go for, for Real and MVP. I don't know. You don't know. All right. 
I've got whoever has the ball last. I think it's going to come down to the last possession. And if, if my MVP, my MVP, I'm going to go Sergio Ju. Well, those were our predictions. And uh, thank you, Matias, so much for sharing all this uh, experience and your opinions about what's going to happen sure. today. We have only one thing, one thing left, which is to enjoy the competition, to enjoy basketball. We love sports we and, do. and this is and the we best love our part. fans who have we been so fans. good to us this season. Yes, you have been watching every day. Thank you so much for that. It's it's been very special to be talking about something that we love so much, Turkish Airlines Euro League. And we love him. And we love him and we love every <laughs> thank guest you, thank you. that's been there with us. And uh just that, you know, we only have to enjoy this last game and look forward for the for the next season. And just a quick reminder, uh, we have this final four yearly discount to offer you with the code F420. You can have a 20% off on the last two remaining games, and you can also buy an individual game in case your favorite team is is uh, is playing. Anthony Goods will be watching the games live on the Watch Alone with Alec Peters and Mike Batiste. So make sure to turn it in at 6.50 Central East Time to follow those games. We are going to be here all day long telling you everything through social media. And uh, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Um, thank see you, you around yeah, Thank you, Sophia. <laughs> thank you, Matias. Thank you, thank you this was amazing, thank man. You. Appreciate yes. it. Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. You for me. Thank you, everyone Thanks. behind the camera that's made this possible. And uh, everyone, enjoy, enjoy the last games of this EuroLeague season 2021 22.